Welcome everyone. Glad to, that you're able to join us today for our credentialing uh, readiness webinar series. We've talked to a number of different uh, suppliers from the VRS side, and now we're looking at uh, the the uh, wallet providers and and issuers of credentials to have a discussion about about that. Uh, we're lucky we have today George Jurgens, Chief Sales uh, Officer of Sparity. Um, before I get into the conversation, though, I, I do want to just remind everyone of our antitrust policy uh, in that we don't talk about pricing, sales terms, territories, uh, refusal to, to deal, or anything of that nature. If you think we're getting into those areas, please let me know, and we'll table that conversation until we speak to council. So we're going to have a little bit of an introduction about uh, who's speaking today. I'd like to talk to you about some of the resources that OCI has developed around uh, around the SCSA, the EDDS system, and then we'll, we'll get the Sparity's perspective on, on all of this. So today we've got George Jurgens, and George, do you want to just say a little bit about yourself before, so I don't just read everything here? <laughs> yeah, sure. So <laughs> yes, yeah, today I'm um, Chief Sales Officer with Sparity. Um, I'm working uh, yeah, since 2018 uh, with Sparity. Uh, we it's an organization basically looking into uh, using digital wallets and establishing trust in, in digital interactions. Uh, my role was uh, is basically now um, supporting basically customers using this technology. And before that, uh, basically before my my career uh, started with Insperity, I worked at uh, at basically a some kind of. Uh, supply chain management service more in the on the uh, on the retailers uh, sorry on the textile side so basically we're, we're looking into how to build systems that companies can purchase um, their goods in in asia and also work for a large german retailer doing various uh, jobs there thanks okay so first i just want to talk a little bit about some of the resources around the drug supply chain security act and and uh, some of the issues or the issue that we're, we're addressing in, in OCI. Uh, essentially, we, we've been working with a number of other organizations. The uh, partnership for DSCSA governance has developed a blueprint for uh, the enhanced drug distribution security system. And that talks about a number of different capabilities from exchanging transaction information to verifying product information, tracing, and also authentication and authorization around credentialing. Uh, we also are working with GS1 around the standards that have been developed for DSCSA purposes and HDA around the verification router service uh, architecture. Within OCI, we have a number of open credential specifications. And again, I'll, I'll emphasize open uh, OCI operates under, um, under a, a, open source environment. So anyone can contribute to OCI and use the output of OCI's uh, specifications. And also there is uh, within OCI a description around authentication or authorization as a general topic and how it, how it applies directly to the Drug Supply Chain Security Act and within the Enhanced Drug Distribution Security System. So let's look at some of the, some of the challenges within DSCSA. Um, typically, if you think about trading partner relationships, you know, you go through your know your customer, know your supplier uh, processes, and so you know who you're purchasing uh, purchasing product from and selling product to. You've done that background check. You most likely have developed uh, secure systems to be able to exchange information uh, within between yourselves and your and your trading partners. You know, typically we look at orders, shipments, invoices, payments, things like that, that you that you transact with your trading partner directly with. Uh, DSCSA is, is, has a, some interesting uh, requirements, I would say. And I know this looks like a, quite a bit of a, a spaghetti chart here, but when we're talking about exchanging TITS data, that follows along the same kind of path that you saw those other other kinds of transactions of shipments, invoice payments, that occurs between known trading partners. And so you've, you're relying on your, know your customer, know your supplier, uh, 
processes in order to know who you're transacting that, that transaction information, transaction statements with. And you're probably doing it through a, a secure channel uh, in order to protect that data as it moves between trading partners. Two other transactions that, that are required by the DSCSA, which don't follow that, that pattern, are product information verification. So being able to take the product information and verifying it directly with the manufacturer or the repackager, which, whichever one actually uh, created the product. And then also tracing the product uh, ownership th back through the supply chain. In these cases, you're actually dealing with, uh, there's two issues here. One is that you may be a, uh, a non-adjacent trading partner. So in this diagram, if we look at trading partner four, they would have to verify product information with trading partner one, which I'm assuming is the manufacturer or the repackager. They may not have a relationship. And so the manufacturer or repackager is receiving a product information verification with, from someone in the world. They don't know whether they are an authorized trading partner. They don't know who they are. And so we need to be able to manage I think, authentication and authorization to determine that that is an authorized trading partner and that they are who they say they are. Again, this is an electronic transaction and, and uh, anyone could try to uh, assume someone else's um, identity. Uh, the other area around tracing, now we, we'll pick on trading partner four again, Let's assume that they're a dispenser. If they are required to trace a product back through the supply chain, they're going to do a series of transactions of TI requests with trading partner three, trading partner two, trading partner one. So trading partner one and two don't have a relationship again with trading partner four. And so authentication and authorization becomes an issue. Uh, and even with trading partner three, even though they, that a relationship exists, uh, that uh, individually created uh, tunnel by which they exchange TITS data and shipment data and invoice data is not the is not how that TI request and response occurs. Also, so even though they may have a relationship, uh, the question is: Are they still the same trading partner that I think that they are in that transaction? And that occurs both ways. Trading partner four wants to be able to know that they are receiving information. PI information and tracing information from the trading partner in the supply chain uh, that's being represented. So that's those are the two areas where where DSCSA is very unique amongst uh, systems that that uh, interact together. So, George, uh, hopefully that's helpful in the background and in, in explaining credentialing and how we got got to credentials and how they're used within this this system yeah thanks bob that's that's uh, very helpful of un for understanding why a solution is actually needed and what we did um disparity and our partners we looked at this problem and developed a solution based on the oci open credentialing specifications um in order to ensure that these digital systems when they interact um, that the trading partners know exactly with whom they're actually talking to and or sharing data with and if they are also authorized and what we can say today because it's the readiness uh, webinar as well is that our solution and our solution is completely audited today against the OCI specifications by Drummond Group so we can say that the requirements that are set by the OCIs are completely met by Sperity and our partners like Legism who are issuing at the end the credentials. And they say they basically do the due diligence in the background of saying, okay, is a trading partner who they say they are and are they actually licensed? So if we if you look at the next slide, you can see that um, our solution today is on the left side implemented for PI verification and tracing requirements as you explained under the DSCSA. And here we integrated um, all the DSCSA solution provider offering a verification routing service. And these solution providers um, have a technical interface with us, with our solution in the background. 
So um, all their customers can use credentials in their processes. So there is no technical integration needed by each customer. It's all done between us and the VRS providers. So what we have is uh, we have uh, our system called product called Caro, and it's basically a digital wallet that can store these credentials to um, to verify uh, sorry authentication authorized trading partners. And this is today in production and used and completely performance tested. So that's that's ready and available. But just give you also an, uh, an basically a hint on what else can be done and what we are currently working with our um, key customers on is actually can we use the same technology, the same concept also in other processes like commercial process. On the left side, PI verification and tracing, as you explained, these are um, transactions happening between trading partners who have no business relationship in the most cases. Um, in order to cash and drop shipment, of course, there are business relationships. I... But, then, but, but then there is an advantage on using credentials, and this is by um, to, to increase at the end efficiency, we having real-time license checks of business partners and standardizing, especially the integration. Here we're working with SAP on basically providing customers a standardized call to wallets to check licenses and um, basically the status of, uh, of, of, the of the current business partners uh, with respect to licenses, uh, state licenses, DEA registration, et cetera. So that's a real-time process. And this is a huge compliance improvement to what's, what's, what's uh, available today. Um, on the next slide, I uh, brought you an example how our solution works in a partnership with the VRS. So we will see, first we will see a verification routing service um, with an incoming uh, request to verify a product. And then we will see how this, how the customer or a manufacturer, for example, can leverage our system to know with whom they're actually sharing data with. And as we will see some screenshots, these transactions have all been in the past. So our system is basically an, uh, basically a real-time communication with the VRS. So everything you will see is uh, happened in the past. And now we can assume that, uh, that there might be some internal or external audits done within the manufacturer or at the manufacturer side or um, basically with the wholesaler. And now imagine that someone is in, in the audit situation and the uh, auditor needs to know, okay, can you prove that for certain data sharing transaction, you actually prove the authorized status of the, uh, of the requester. And this is what I want to show on your next slide. On the next slide, you see basically the SAP system as an example, and I highlighted two data fields. One is a unique uh, um, correlation UUID. That's basically the transaction identifier. Basically every transaction uh, for product verification has an identifier. And you see um, the request. And if in this um, transaction credentials are um, used, and he, this is basically a um, incoming request from a, this called is this SAP uh, pharma wholesaler, which is a test company, and the responder is the manufacturer. So this is the view a, man, a manufacturer has in the VRS. Now, in an audit situation, our customer can take this correlation UUID and copy it, and then open our system, which tracked in the background and verified in the background the requester's um, ATP credential, and then paste it on the next slide. You see the um, our system. Just paste the correlation UUID in our system, and we directly give you all the transaction informations um, that we logged in our system. And everything what we log now is the um, we log now the verification process of the requester's credential. 
this is what we see on the next next slide. Next slide, you see then the result. And this shows then um, the customer, okay, the credential was actually um, successfully verified. And if now the auditor wants to go deeper, we will also we can also provide you the, the, the files, the log files, et cetera. Um, how basically with all the signals and everything on it. So this is at the end a process to cover the um the uh the, the, our customers in audit situation. On the next slide, oh, forward, yeah. This is basically then the they find more details on the requester. And this is actually unique because in the VRS you're not seeing any uh, any uh, main data or any contact data of the requester. Here you see the legal name, but additionally you see also the the address and the and the um, what kind of credential they delivered. So you see more data than you actually see in the, in the VRS. And with that, we create a um, at the end. It's also a list of trading partners who are interacting with you, uh, which you can see in the next slide. Oh, no one. Oh, sorry, you see it in the last slide. <laughs> so now what we so now we saw um the 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 perspective of the manufacturer. Now we talk about a round trip. A, a wholesaler is asking for product verification. The product verification travels to the, the manufacturer, and the manufacturer, what we just saw, responded. Now the wholesaler again sees also in their system. Um, also, this uh, trans basically this, this, the same transaction, and they also see that the request the responder use credentials. So, on the next slide, in case the wholesaler or the requester is an audit situation, we they they can do exactly the same. They also see okay, they will also find for each um correlation UUID all the events. Um, basically to verify an, an authorized trading partner in their system. So we can click through this. That's now the search bar again. Then they will see that this basically was in the, the, basically by the, by, the, by the manufacturer. And then on the last slide, you see also the thing. We can skip this. It's, that's the same, but just to see. Now you see basically all the trading partners that that you're interacted with on on the slide and that's again a what what we will see is at the end of the day we will have great in our system a at the end a directory with all the uh trading partner you communicated with or a customer communicated with and the system um what well, was i said earlier that's that's available that's working i think if you go on the next slide you see all the integrated partners we're working with. So all the VRS providers who have a, a solution on the market use our system and any customer of them can just plug in credentials to their VRS in order to comply with the ATP requirements under DSCSA. And the technical integration is uh, basically done already by us and the VRS partners. And what needs to be done is basically the onboarding. And this is where we collaborate with our partner Ledgism, where the every applicant, basically every user of credentialing need to run through an identity verification process um, in order to know if it's really who uh, is the company who they say they are and do they have certain licenses. And this is then again monitored by, by the credential issuer. And with that, we ensure that every user of a VRS is actually an authorized trading partner. That's basically what we what what's our what's our offering is and um, how we're supporting the industry complying be, be compliant with DSCSA requirement. George, should we open up for for questions? Absolutely. So if you have any, any thoughts or questions, please, um, if you can unmute yourself first. 
so George, one thing that I, that I saw there that you're showing, and I'm, I'm just putting some of the pieces together again. Uh, if I have a, VR, a VRS provider and they're using my credentials, they're, they're um, using the credentials that are in your wallet, your system. At other points in time, I can look in their system to see who I've interacted with and then check back in your system to see, to make sure that uh, they balance, that the same people that, they're, that they've allowed the use of a credential is in your system being being traced as to whether the credentials have been uh, verified, uh, whether there are any issues. And I also can manage my own credentials for and give permissions to those. Yeah, yeah but, well, exactly. That's that's how it works. So today, the VRS um, messaging standard, the, in order to exchange or basically do product verification with each other, um, all the trading partners need is a, is a GLN in order uh, basic to be identified. But the GLN has no information if if it's an authorized trading partner and the GLN is actually public knowledge where anyone can just take a GLN and start using a VRS. But you are you will see this GLN and et cetera, everything in the VRS, but you have no information if this is actually uh, really the owner of the, or basically the, the holder of the GLN or if it's some malicious actor. And that's why we add another security level with that with our system. So um the the um the GS1, for example, they they added credentials, ATP credentialing to the to the lightweight messaging standards. So um according to GS1 now, we added a layer of security with that with that, with that system because we can um provide information who is actually asking, who is asking for product verification. And um, this is what um, basically in, in, in the future, the, the, the big manufacturers that are today using and are committed to credentialing, they will turn credentialing on as mandatory. So they will at one point of time for, for a given number of, of, of a certain number of big manufacturers, you cannot just use the VRS and ask for verification because they will make it a requirement that you present your credential. Interesting. So if, if you're ever asked, who did you provide information on to, or who did you receive information and, and base your, your actions on, uh, this gives you a, a clear audit trail from, from two perspectives, the VRS provider or a trace provider in the future. And and also your wallet and having that capability that, that you showed of matching both of those to make sure that they're both in sync and, and providing that same information gives you that uh, capability to, to prove that you gave information or received information from a, a trading partner, an authorized trading partner, or even an authority, I imagine. Yeah. That, that's that's exactly why we why we built this. Yeah. And these credentials that we're using for DSCSA purposes, you mentioned uh, order to cash and a few other use cases. Uh, can we re can we reuse these, or do we need different different credentials for those other use cases? And there can be uh, additional um, additional credentials. Um, we can basically look into because we talk now about business to business relationships and now the companies have requirements or what kind of licenses they need in order to before sending a shipment out and this can be a bunch of uh, requirements licenses registrations so we can add more credentials into a wallet under the, exactly the same principle okay that's right i forgot that DSCSA is about ownership transfer, but when you're talking about shipping, you're actually looking at the credentials or the licenses for that particular location that you're trying exactly. to ship to. Exactly. Okay. And the difference is today, you may have a list of of uh, licenses, and you track that, and you get a new you get a new list if something's changed. But with credentials, if a single license changes, then then your credential kind of lights up if you will that yeah 
Yeah, this can be been, can be basically um, updated uh, faster, and basic credentials can be can can be revoked actually in real time. So the and then with that, uh, also the vision is also to sync this with uh, with customer main data and the ERP. So have basically connection to ERPs so that you have all the the data you have about a customer, the license and registration data, you have them in your ERP. But on the same time, in the background, we can verify them on a daily base, for example, to ensure that the information you have in your ERP system on what you are making the decision on sending or not sending a product is always up to date mm -hmm. without manual intervention. Interesting. Okay. Um, I'll just open it up again if there are any questions from folks that are that are on. Um, George, we'll be making this recording available, obviously. Okay. Thanks, George, for coming on and and providing that information. And we look forward to to not only the use in DSCSA, but in other areas such as uh, order to cash. It would be very interesting to see how that that plays out and. Uh, how we can leverage what's been already done here for the SCSA. Thank you both for the opportunity. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.